Hi, welcome to FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. It's fair to say that U.S. media could do more to include Palestinian voices in their coverage of the Israeli assault on Gaza. On August 3rd, Meet the Press invited Riyad Mansour, the permanent observer of Palestine, to the United Nations. But host David Gregory seemed to want to know only one thing, how much Mansour would condemn Hamas. And let me stop you on that point. Your anger at Israel, certainly understandable. The loss of civilians, horrific. There is agreement about that. I'm wondering, though, whether you're outraged by the conduct of Hamas, starting the conflict by firing rockets, building tunnels to kill and kidnap Israelis, being more than willing to sacrifice Palestinian lives by embedding them into, into their own kind of arsenal and using them, as Israel contends, as human shields. Do you have a level of outrage at Hamas itself? Gregory would not let this issue go. My that question, hold on, my question stands, hold on, sir. I'm asking whether you are outraged at the conduct of Hamas. I am outraged. They fired rockets, they built tunnels for the purpose of okay. killing and kidnapping Israelis, and they do exploit these Palestinian civilians when they know they're going to be in danger from where they're firing the rockets and so forth. Do you have any outrage toward I am Hamas? Out he asked a version of the same question one more time. By that point, there wasn't much time left to talk about anything else. This kind of thing has happened before. In fact, two days earlier, when Youssef Munayer was invited by CNN on August 1st. Youssef, Israel is incensed by, by the fact Hamas violated the ceasefire in order to kidnap this soldier. Do you condemn those tactics? So Munayer was asked to denounce something that, as he pointed out, had not even been confirmed to have happened in the first place. This raises at least one obvious question. Are Israeli guests treated the same way? On that same episode of Meet the Press, Gregory also interviewed Israeli Ambassador Ron Dermer, but he was not asked to denounce atrocities committed by the Israeli government. That treatment is reserved for Palestinians. The White House summit on Africa brought dozens of heads of state from across the continent to Washington. That could have presented media opportunities to discuss economic development in addition to corporate power, human rights abuses, and the U.S.-led war on terrorism. But the Sunday morning chat shows had a very different idea. CBS's Face the Nation decided its Africa expert would be, well, this guy, CEO and former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg. He appeared alongside ranking White House advisor Valerie Jarrett. There are all sorts of people CBS could have interviewed about Africa, academics, regional experts, or perhaps the human rights activists who protested the fact that attendees included U.S. allied dictators and human rights abusers. Over at ABC's This Week, George Stephanopoulos had on two Africans to discuss the summit, Nigerian singer Dabaj and Dr. Sifo Moyo of the rock singer Bono's One campaign. Stephanopoulos, perhaps in a bid to give viewers a handy reference point, awkwardly introduced Debaj this way. Africa getting so much attention right now, and there's the man they call Africa's Bono, Nigerian superstar Debaj. Now, it's unlikely that these shows are going to discuss Africa much at all in the near future, so it's disappointing that the guests they heard from were an American billionaire and a performer they were told is a lot like an Irish rock star. And finally, on August 1st, the New York Times ran a correction to this story about how Congress views a White House deal with Iran. The piece meant to say $2 billion when it said $2 million, which is kind of a big mistake. But the correction makes a much bigger error with this reference to a vote on any agreement with Iran on its nuclear weapons program. Iran has a uranium enrichment program. Some politicians claim it is concealing a weapons program. This has never been substantiated by international inspectors, but it is often treated as a fact by journalists. The original article in the Times had it right, referring to suspected efforts to design a weapon. Suspicions should not be treated as fact, and corrections should not require additional correction. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.